<laughs> oh, hey, Mick. Eh? What right. a day. Eh? So, welcome to room 101. Thank you. The way this works, because I know how to explain the rules about 15 times to you. Um, <laughs> never so, seen it. He's never seen it. He's, I wouldn't mind, but he's written it. Right, <laughs> never seen it. He's, uh, so, we, the way it works, right, is you're going to present me... You're going to present me something, and you're going to say, I want to put this in Room 101. And I'm going to talk about it. We're going to put it to the audience. We're going to do this. If it should go into Room 101, it's that. If it's, if it's, we're going to save it. No, we don't agree with Mick. We need to save it. Is that all right? I'll probably forget that and mix it up in a minute. But it doesn't really matter, because it's quarter past four. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, Mick, eh? Look at that. So, I understand you've got a number of things. So, would you like to take me through the first... Oh, and when he says the thing, we all go really crackers, like we're American. <laughs> yeah, that, like that. All right, so, um, so, Mick, Room 101, what do you want to put in first? Well, I've chosen three things to put into this Room 101 that I've heard about that... Sound very, very, very simple, but I think on the way back in the car, and maybe during the week, you'll think there was more to that than they talked about. The first thing I'm going to put into Room 101 to make our schools better are photocopiers. I've got to say, Michael, there's a lot of love in the room for you wanting to set fire to the photocopiers. But I personally find the photocopy, photocopy machine an absolute boom. Yeah, well, I, I remember when they were invented. <laughs> we were talking earlier and he said he remembers the banda and I beat that because I could remember the Mercator roll map. Uh, and I can remember tracing paper, which is the, the early form of photocopier. I've got to say, I had, I had a teacher at school, he used to rock up, he loved that banda machine just a little bit too much. Yeah, that's right. The thing is, the, the, uh, uh, the other week I was doing some maths with some children in the classroom. We were doing um, estimation, so estimating the length of the room, estimating the weight of this book, estimating the height of the table, all these sort of things. And we, uh, just uh, in passing, what do you think the thickness of an exercise book is when it's new? So they all estimated, and we then measured it, and it's 0.3 centimetres. And two questions later, I said, what do you think the thickness of an exercise book is when it's full? And we all estimated, and then we measured it, and it was 0.9 centimetres. So I said, you do thick writing, don't you? <laughs> Your writing is 0.6 of a centimetre in a three centimetre. It's, it's twice. I mean, that's amazing, isn't it? And of course, you know what it is, which is what all the children and the teachers said, is it's not actually written in the exercise book. What we do is we write on a printed sheet, and then we stick it in the exercise book, and we stick, so it triples in size. And actually, if we're trying to save the world, it's a bit silly buying pa paper exercise books and then using them for sticking in. So, so I think... The reason we're doing it, of course, is because somebody's coming around to see what they've been doing. I know, I know, but I quite liked it when Bloke rocked up and started taking the machine to bits. I oh, used yeah, to yeah, like that, that bit. Right. Yeah, 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 I like that, that right. bit. Look, I'm not sure about this photocopier thing, and frankly, I'm surprised at you lot. I think you've just jumped on sort of, some sort of anti-photocopier bandwagon. <laughs> but before we decide whether it's going in room 101... Mick and I would like to read a poem. Can we have your visual permission? Yeah. Well, that it's that. It's just that. It's just nodding and smiling. So we've, we, we, we're going to pretend that we wrote this. I'm starting. Yeah. In the class of Mr. Pass, the children sat in groups of seats and filled in all their printed sheets. Then they stuck them in their books. In case a school inspector looks. We're aiming here for excellence. So what we need is evidence. <laughs> in the class of Mr. Pass, hardly any words were spoken until they said, The photocopy is broken. <laughs> said they to him, 
what shall we do? We have no printed sheets to glue. Said he to them, we can't just sit, and now we have no use for print. <laughs> well, we could sing, or paint, or dance, or look upon the globe for France. Write poetry or sew and weave, experiment and make believe. Look at books or study rocks, or learn to tell the time with clocks. Make a model, hatch an egg, explode a real powder keg. Use compasses and trundle wheels, grow crescent, make cakes, cook healthy meals. Or surf the web, do puppet plays, play a tune, make pots to glaze. Do you think you'd learn? Make progress too. Evidence what you can do without the need to use the glue. <laughs> but then they said, The copy is mended. Back to sheets, ideas suspended. It's a rape poem. Now, this thing about putting it in room 101, I'm not convinced. What do you think? We're going to get rid. We're going to get rid. Right, show me then. Photocopiers. Fo Laminators. <laughs> get rid of what? Get rid of... It's kicking off about photocopiers now. We've got representatives of Bosch in uh, the next bet there. Look, I'm going to decide. I've got casting votes anyway. We're just going to lob it in and see what happens on Monday. <laughs> Round of applause for photocopying. <laughs> so, Mick, Professor Michael Waters. <coughs> Michael. Yeah, it's Sunday, Sunday tomorrow. Um, What's the next thing that you want to put into Room 101? Well, I don't think this one will be popular. This is school uniforms. <laughs> oh, 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 we thought we were on edge with photocopiers, but <laughs> this has touched a nerve on a Saturday afternoon. Tell us why, what's the problem? I, what's the well, I've just listened to some amazing young uh, students talking about wanting to make decisions, talking about self-control, self-management, self-reliance, talking about links to the real world. And I, I spend time in schools wondering how does wearing the same colour for five years every single day without any choice help that? Well, all right, I can see you winning the room a little bit. But the thing is, the thing about uniform, I quite liked wearing a uniform when I was at school. It sort of said, right, these, this is my tribe, and they, they might kick me head in over there because they've got a different colour blazer on. So it was good in terms of just self-preservation. Isn't that reason enough? Um, so we wear our costumes of our different colours, and that enables us to know which pack we're in. And it builds our pride in our school. And we spent a little bit of time clapping people who said we need to work together, encourage collaboration, all be in the same boat, looking for the same thing. But no, we... I mean, I just find it interesting. The only two people who've come in their uniform today are me and David Cameron. <laughs> Every other person's chosen what to come in. That's when you go around schools, the children are all wearing... I mean, from this size... This size, I mean, you know, they're wearing the same clothes. Well, I mean, how, I mean, I just, I think you're just making them out and out of a molehill here, really, to be honest with you. But the, if, if it was like, what, what, what's the worst it could be? I, I, I think the uniform thing's all right. What's the worst, do you think, uniforms could get to? All I can see is kids who look smart. So what's the worst? Oh, yeah, okay. Well, I'm all for smart and I'm all for a dress code and saying to youngsters, make decisions fitting in with what you're going to do today. 
And if I were ahead, I'd say, right, well, we're having a dress code, but here's five colours you could choose from. And come in different colours sometimes. And just imagine if you're the person whose hair clashes with your uniform and you've got to wear that. <laughs> ah, just think about self-esteem. And I find it fascinating that, you, you know, if you pay a fiver, you can not have to wear it as a treat, <laughs> as a mufti. They call it mufti, don't they? I just to. think that we could... <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> and then, and then, you know, we, we, we say there's a link between wearing a uniform and standards because the schools that got high standards, so-called, are the schools that seem to have a uniform. Therefore, that will pertain for everybody. And I just think that's false logic. Absolutely. What I do think is, if you go to Cuba, you look at Cuba, I don't know if you've ever been, but all the children in Cuba in key stage two, wear beige dungarees, the whole lot of them. Every school, they all wear them. And that could be the answer. <laughs> if you want uniform, this is what it could look like. Look at our year nine, David, modelling the year nine uniform for next year. This, this is the future. Come on, David. <laughs> David is wearing the proposed Year 9 uniform for the whole of the nation. <laughs> year 8 will be a light green. Year 7 will be a light beige and so on. Uh, this is so that we can now teach them in an age-related way. If they're wearing their age-related costume, you know exactly what they need. For the children who are making really good progress, turn around David, there will be a, a patch here so that it will show that they're making real progress, they'll be in a purple patch. <laughs> right? Children doing all... Prince! So, uh, <laughs> some who are doing relatively well will be in the pink. If you're just starting to learn, you'll have a green, because you'll be in the green shoots. And if you need a bit of a boost, you'll have ginger, because you'll need gingering up. <laughs> now, you know, these things will help. They will help. It sounds ridiculous, but I'm sure that on the way home you'll realise how important uniform... Do you want to go? Yeah, well, have uh, I been, uh, sorry, have I been humiliating you? Not? No, no. Because <laughs> the, yeah. the last thing to say about the benefit of this, I, re I really do have to tell you, is that no longer will you have to tell children to do their top button and their tie-up. Because you just tell them to do their zip-up. All right? There we go from Wait. there. All right? I, I'm not... Sorry, you got to go. you got to get on. Um, oh, yeah. Um, oh, well, I'm, I'm just grateful for the illustration there. That was useful. I know you're being facetious there and saying how, how far it can go. And I actually do want to put that in now just because, uh, well, I'm sorry. It's just because of David Cameron looking like a sperm. Uh, <laughs> So could, I'm going to put it in, is that all right? It's just a, yeah. Oh, ooh. Well, do you know what? You know, get a microphone. Um, <laughs> it's, it's not real. Okay. Um, oh, are we having a good time? Hey, right. So thank you, David, for that. He's just in counselling. <laughs> so we've... We've just got one more thing to wonder about throwing into Room 101. And uh, what is it, Mick? It's overcomplicated job interviews. Yeah. Oh, that's and you would win it back. <laughs> uh, what do you mean? Do you want to explain that? I think you won the room a little well, bit. Well, I, I just, just do believe, I, I do spend a lot of time in schools and sometimes asked to be involved in appointment processes. But over the years, I've watched job appointment processes become more like a version of Strictly Bake Off, Come Dancing... <laughs> and pottery throwdown all linked together so it's like a knockout competition rather than a true professional thing do you think though that we need there needs to be quite a bit of time spent on these sort of processes though so you you know you're getting the right person yeah i have found over time that if you sit and talk to, get somebody to talk and have a conversation for perhaps an hour or so you probably in the last 10 minutes get down to what they really think and what they really believe and, and not what they think they've got to say in order to impress. And it seems to me a little bit different from getting people to do these performances 
I'm, I'm just reading the letters these days. I, I look at letters and I think, flipping heck, is this person applying for the job of uh, head of NASA or, uh, you know, in charge of the United Nations or something? The, the amazing things we can do to tick every job spec are just lacking humility. Let's so what, what's, what's the most extreme thing you've seen recently? Oh, I've, no. Well, let's just revisit what we saw the other week, shall well, we? Well, OK. The most extreme thing we've, we've heard about is is actually um, you're teaching in your school, you've applied for a job, and someone from the school that you're hoping to go to comes to watch you in your school. And it's a governor from over there. So, fairly extreme. So, what we've got is some documentary footage, found footage of such an incident. We're going to do some drama now. All right. So, we just need a bit of spirit. We've got plenty of warmth. We just need a bit of spirit from you. Let's say, let's say that we're in, a, we're in young Mr. Waters' classroom. He wants to move on in his career. And he's going to get a visit paid now from a governor from the school where he hopes to work. So this is what we saw. Putting up my words. He's putting up, <laughs> yeah, you've got to imagine that. Is that all right? I know it, yeah. We're going to do some acting now. Good afternoon, Mr. Waters. How nice to see you. Oh, hello. Mr. Ivor Vacancy. Oh, hello. One, one of the governors at Super Duper Free Grammar Academy, where you have applied for the post of deputy head teacher. As you know, what on, uh, one of our due diligence scrutiny policies in respect of the appointments subcommittee of the staffing committee is to visit all shortlisted applicants to their own school to see them on their own turf, as it were. Yes, I can see the sense of that. A sort, a sort of QA procedure. Yes, that's right. Yes, that's right. All very informal. Just a chance to run the rule over everybody and see how they measure up <laughs> before the big day next week suggested by our highly paid freelance HR consultant. So, are you going to all the candidates? Oh no, 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 no. We've divided up the visits between four governors. One per candidate so everyone gets someone different and then it's fair to everyone. Got to remember equal ops and all that, you know. <laughs> of course, of course but, but how will the four different governors go into four different places and make it equal? Oh well, we choose the governors who know very little about teaching as they will bring a really impartial oh, insight yeah. and that means there is a sort of equal lack of knowledge which which gives each candidate the same chance to impress us I know I'm going to observe you teaching your next session but shall we have a look around and chat before the pupils arrive of course in the actual interview there will be several tasks in the assessment center the assessment center oh yes it's more than a formal interview, isn't it? Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> Day one has several activities included. There is an in-tray exercise to show how you manage pressure and crises. Then, a meeting with some parents. Then, a group discussion with other candidates to observe your ability to work collaboratively. Then there is the observed interview with pupils, and they, they are very astute, our pupils. Then there is a session where you observe a teacher working and give feedback, observed by two knowledge-free governors. Well, it certainly does sound a very intensive day. <laughs> well, yes, can't be too thorough, though, can we? We also have you leading... The assembly for a quarter of the school and the theme, the theme of the theme is ambition with humility. <laughs> and we'd like you to offer that in a multi-faith dimension. Are you okay with that? Uh, I think so. And here's the crunch. Oh, it's a beauty. The only equipment you will have is a compact disc player. 
And then there is the lesson itself. Uh, the, uh, the lesson? Yes, yes, yes. We want to observe you teaching a lesson to mixed ability, mixed age class with PHSE focus and a literacy twist. <laughs> that should be a reasonable challenge for you. Uh, w w well, yes. Um, would you like me to do it standing on one leg to add an extra challenge, a bit of spice? Yes, I, I think that's an excellent idea. Look, we'd better get on with it because the pupils will be here soon. I, I have some prepared areas of discussion so that equal ops prevail. Shall I just run through them? Oh, yes, fire on, fire right, on. Let's start. Can you show me where you have taught some facts? Facts, yes, mm. yes. Do look over here. On this display here, we can see the way pupils have studied the world and located various capitals. Oh, that's good. Now, I've been on holiday to some of those places. Oh, good, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, nice do, you, do you develop links between curriculum subjects? Oh, yes. Well, in each of these countries, we've looked at the art traditions and made links to the artists and their insights into the contemporary cultural and political urgencies. So if you look over here. I see, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, lots of places. Yeah, it's all right. You're just there. You're just yeah. there. I see. So, uh, th these are the pupils' efforts at working in the style of Vermeer. My goodness, Vermeer. Yes, yes. Some of the pupils actually thought we were saying veneer. <laughs> so I explained that veneer is a thin and superficial covering rather than a famous artist. <laughs> they misheard. <laughs> Brilliant. So this led into some phonics work. Yeah. Back to basics. We like that. Science? Yes, yes, we do science. Here's a display of the results of an experiment done on the particulate theory of matter and the changing state of matter. The pupils take everyday food and they work out whether they can change the state of matter and then reverse the process. I see. So, bread to toast, melted chocolate, yes. fried eggs, jelly, Oh, very exciting. Did the pupils enjoy all the experiments with the heat and the test tubes and so on? Uh, well, 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 actually, no, we, we didn't actually do the experiment as such. The pupils were asked to anticipate what would have happened if they had done the experiment. And it saved time anyway, because most of them have been seed toast anyway, and there's melted chocolate. So, so they didn't need to actually do it. That's so impressive. Much better to just do the results. More efficient and gets the evidence in the books. Yes, well, that's it. We, we want evidence in the book, printed sheets and everything. And we're in this school, we're a bit sceptical about all this concrete experience malarkey. Mm. Actually, concrete's another example of changing states of matter, but we didn't do that one. Um, writing, do you do any of that? Oh, plenty, plenty, oh. plenty of writing. The pencil is virtually welded to the fingers. Uh, we, we find they're a bit confused by fronted adverbials, but we're getting there with those. Tables? Tables, daily. Daily, uh, well, sometimes hourly. We're now up to the 17 times table. 17, 11, 187, just like that, the children can bring it back absolutely by heart. <laughs> Excellent. It certainly is impressive, Mr. Waters. Shouldn't the uh, children be here by now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah they, they'll be here in a minute, but what we've... We do in this school is with foundation stage, we just invite them in half an hour later than the rest of the school. I took a bit there and got a bit. <laughs> well, having made everyone sit through that, um, I think we're definitely putting that in room 101. Yes? Colleagues, what, what we get um, at the end is the, we just have this little bit at the end just to say, well, it's all been quite good fun uh, today, hasn't it? I'm not doing a closing speech. I'm just saying that's the end of our bit. So I hope you've just enjoyed a little bit of that and seen it as a nice way to reflect on the day. Thanks, Mick. Thanks, everyone. Off you go. Go and get some wine uh, if you can. If not, have safe journeys home. Thank you so much for coming. Bye, everyone, and see you next year, hopefully.